My fellow Americans, just hours ago, Donald Trump delivered what might be the most important message of his entire campaign. Standing before massive crowds in North Carolina and Georgia, he didn't just make promises, he laid out a battle plan. Four years we've waited for this, and now it's tomorrow. But what he said off camera, what he revealed about the next 24 hours, that's what the mainstream media doesn't want you to hear. When Trump talks about America's last chance to turn things around, he's talking about taking back control. And speaking of taking control, let's talk about something that's holding millions of men back right now. Like Trump has warned about hidden forces attacking our nation, there's a hidden force attacking your testosterone levels. It's not what you think. It's not age. It's not lack of exercise. It's something that you are eating every day, something they told you was healthy. The shocking revelation is devastating testosterone levels nationwide, and most men have no idea. You want to know what this testosterone-killing food is? Well, V-Shred has created a video that exposes exactly what this food is and why removing it from your diet could unlock your body's true potential. Head over to SculptNation.com slash NNN or just click the link below to watch the video. V-Shred's experts break it all down, and this one simple change could make all the difference. Trust me, this is one thing you don't want to miss. We thank our sponsors for making this show possible. Got a lot to break down here. Got some Trump ads. We got some Trump segments of speeches. Lots to unpack. Of course, some cringe moments from Kamala Harris. But this one really caught my attention. Tucker Carlson narrating this ad. Listen to this. Millions of Americans sincerely love Donald Trump. They love him in spite of everything they've heard. They love him often in spite of himself. They love Donald Trump because no one else loves them. The country their ancestors fought for over hundreds of years has left them to die in their unfashionable little towns, mocked and despised by the sneering halfwits with finance degrees but no actual skills who seem to run everything all of a sudden. Whatever Donald Trump's faults, he is better than the rest of the people in charge. Donald Trump, in other words, is and has always been a living indictment of the people who run this country. That was true when Trump came out of nowhere to win the presidency, and it's every bit as true right now. Trump rose because they failed. It's as simple as that. If the people in charge had done a halfway decent job with the country they inherited, Donald Trump would still be hosting Celebrity Apprentice, but they didn't. Instead, they were incompetent and narcissistic and cruel and relentlessly dishonest. They wrecked what they didn't build, they lied about it. They hurt anyone who told the truth about what they were doing. That's true, we watched. America is still a great country, the best in the world, but our ruling class is disgusting. A vote for Trump is a vote against them. That's what's going on in this country. What a great ad. Here's another one that just came out. Message. When I first came into office, I cut taxes more than any other president. We have created 7 million new jobs, and it led to a growth like we've never seen before. We developed the greatest economy in history by far. When I left office, it changed. Inflation destroyed the lives of so many people. Interest rates went from 2% to 10%. Millions of illegal immigrants, traffickers, and drugs coming into our country. Our country has gone to hell. So I made a decision to run. We're going to make America great again, greater than ever before. I will fight for you with every breath and I will never let you down. President Trump is literally putting his life on the line and he's willing to risk it all because he loves this country. He is strong, he is fearless, and he is what this country needs right now. Our cities will be safe, our streets will be clean, and our border will be secure. We can't allow our country to be destroyed by politicians who will put their own power ahead of the interests of the American people, our freedom, and our future. The left told me to hate Trump. When you cut through the lies, you realize the truth. 
American families were better when Donald Trump was president. We were safer, wealthier, and stronger. So if you love this country, if you want to stand up and fight for the future of our nation, you must reelect Donald J. Trump. Yeah, let's go. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Wow, man, this is the barrage of commercials and rallies. I mean, whether you're watching this, you know, tonight on election night eve or you're watching it right before you go to vote on november 5th this is the final message from the trump campaign this has been a long hard fought election indictments assassination attempts i mean the list goes on and on but president trump has this to say Allah. Tomorrow you have to stand up and tell Kamala that you've had enough. You can't take anymore. You just can't. What? They're all screaming fire. Please get him. I mean, she's what a terrible job. What they have done to our country. And you're going to say that to her. You're going to say you've done a terrible job. You're grossly incompetent. We're not going to take it anymore. Kamala, you're fired. Get the hell out. Get the hell out of here. You're out of here. Get out of here. That's- you're fired, Kamala. Here is Sarah Huckabee Sanders. I love that woman. I remember reporting on just the abuse that she took as President Trump's press secretary in the White House and uh, donated to her gubernatorial campaign. Got a chance to meet her, shake her hand with my wife, and uh, you know, got to go to the gubernatorial ball and uh, just experience that. 3,000 people dressed to the nines. <laughs> Everyone said that my wife and I were dressed the greatest. <laughs> that was crazy. The staff actually stopped us and like made a huge deal about how my wife and I were dressed. Anyway, here's President Trump in North Carolina. Uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders in North Carolina. And that's what. Good morning. It is an honor to share the stage with America's best and favorite president. and soon to be our next president again. We know we've never had a president who fights more, who fights harder, and loves this country the way that Donald J. Trump does, and that's why we need him back in the White House. Every day when the left was relentlessly attacking me, It was Donald Trump who stood up for me, who empowered me and gave me confidence to do my job. And that's what he does for every single American, every single day. He will not let us down. Make sure you get out and vote North Carolina. We need you because America needs Donald Trump and we're gonna make it happen. Thank you so much for all you're doing. Amen, man. I love Sarah Huckabee Sanders. President Trump talking about what he will do on day one. Uh, so now we have a new president in Mexico. I uh, suppose a very, a very nice woman. They say I haven't met her. And I'm going to inform her on day one or sooner that if they don't stop this onslaught of criminals and drugs coming into our country, I'm going to immediately impose a 25% tariff on everything they send in to the United States of America. Now we have a new president. We got more. Here's the, okay. Brian, you're going to have to go vertical with this one because it is crazy. See, President Trump, okay. He goes off script all day long. Of course, he has his prepared statements. But 
what I'm about to show you is so absolutely ridiculous. This is from Trump War Room. Everything Kamala does is choreographed and rehearsed down to the second. What I'm about to show you, three events stacked, and you're going to listen and watch everything. This is crazy. Are you ready to make your voices heard? How creepy, right? Wasn't that just so creepy? Oh, man. But that just shows you how phony Kamala Harris is. Here we have more from President Trump. Economic health. We are going to uh, horizontal rescue run. our economy. Four years of Kamala has delivered nothing but economic hell for our American workers. Her inflation disasters made life unaffordable and cost families over $30,000 in higher prices. And just days ago, we had the worst jobs report in modern history. You know that. I looked up, I said, thank you. <laughs> because they tried to hold it. They tried not to put the report out. Kamala said, don't put that report, it'll cost me the election. But the problem is the fake news doesn't want to report on it. So usually you're hearing, 200,000 jobs, 300,000, sometimes like four. We had the best numbers people have ever seen. But usually you're looking at a lot of, you know, hundreds of thousands of jobs. Routinely, it's expanding and 12,000 jobs were created. That's a depression, 12,000 jobs were created. But that's the good news. 30,000 private sector jobs were killed in a single month. Nearly 100,000 manufacturing jobs have been wiped out since the start of this year. 150,000 Americans joined the unemployment rolls in October. This is in one month. Wow. Unemployment, continued devastation. Here's more. Turn this e under my leadership, we are quickly going to turn this economic nightmare into an economic miracle. You'll see. And we're going to make America wealthy again. And we will make America very importantly affordable again because people cannot afford the prices. The prices are too high. We're just one day away from the best jobs and biggest paychecks and the brightest economic future that the world has. Ever seen. But you must go and vote, and Kamala talks about fixing the economy, but why doesn't she do it? She yeah, why doesn't she do it now, right? Here's more. Oh, this is good. They're in corrupt forces. For the past nine years, we have been fighting against the most sinister and corrupt forces on Earth. We have together, all of us together. With your vote in this election, you can show them once and for all that this nation does not belong to them. This nation belongs to you. It belongs to you. Because it was the hardworking patriots like you who built this country, and tomorrow it is the hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. Think of this, I won't be doing this anymore with North Carolina, and I won't be doing this anymore with, after today, this is, I'm just thinking as I'm going through this, that this will be our final moment. But the, the really, the more exciting moment is going to begin. See, these moments of hundreds and hundreds of the most incredible rallies that any country, no country's ever seen anything like that. But these moments, these moments that we've had together, these really were just to create what we hopefully will create tomorrow, which is we're going to make America great again. We had to get there together. So we'll have 
many meetings, but we won't have rally meetings. We're going to have maybe we'll rally in that we'll rally in our success. We'll have because we're going to make our country. We're going to make our country so successful. And we did it. We had the greatest. We had the greatest economy. Best. You see the numbers. You see the charts. We did such a good job, but we'll do a much better job now because I know the people now. I know I know the good ones, the bad ones. I know the weak ones, the strong ones. I know the stupid ones. I know the smart ones. I know them all. After all, we've been through it together. We stand on the verge of the four greatest years in American history. With your help, we will restore America's promise and we will take back the nation that we all love so much. We are one people. One family and one glorious nation under God. We will never give in. We will never give up. We will never back down, and we will never ever surrender. Together, we will fight, 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 and win, win, win. Yeah. We are going to fight, 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 and we are going to win, win, win. Here's another one. This is Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. A great day. Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and Georgia. Be bigger. This is the big moment. We have a situation where if we do the right thing, we're going to have an America that will be bigger, better, bolder, richer, safer, stronger. But this election is a choice between whether we will have four more years of incompetence and failure or whether we will begin the four greatest years in the history of our country. And everything we've been fighting for so hard to achieve for the past nine years, it all comes down to the next two days. It's now or never, for the sake of your family, for the sake of your country, for your freedom, you have to get up and go. Did you see that? That was a shot from Macon, Georgia. Man, that's that's the city that's close to my heart. That's where my grandfather was from. I took a family trip down there, my wife and kids, and uh, we went to the we went to the graveyard. And we found the family plot. We never knew uh, when before my grandfather passed, he had a stroke, and I asked him once. I said, "Grandpa, who is your who is your um, your your grandmother?" And he said, Olive. And I said, I love you too, Grandpa. And he said, Olive. I said, I love you too, Grandpa. And then we went to the graveyard because I I'd searched on ancestry. I couldn't find this person, like my grandfather's grandmother. And uh, we went to the to the to the local records and we went to the graveyard um and we found we went to the the plot and there it was olive martin was on the headstone <laughs> and uh oh man that was an amazing moment but that's what my grandfather was was uh was raised in macon but his family actually came from another part of georgia Amazing story. Anyway, uh, sorry to get sidetracked, but I see Macon and it just touches me. Um, here's Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Here's what he has to say. Closing arguments. This is our hey, everybody. A lot of people are asking me if they live in a red state or a blue state, should they still be voting for me? What about swing states? The answer is easy, no. No matter what state you live in, you should be voting for Donald Trump. And let me tell you why. That's the only way that we can get me and everything I stand for into Washington, D.C. and fulfill the mission that motivated my campaign. Right now, free speech is under withering and relentless attack in America and across the globe. But at least we still have enough of it here that you can watch this video. We can still run an opposition political campaign. Well, in a lot of countries, you can't do that anymore because the state now controls the media. The state censors the internet. Brazil just banned Twitter because Elon Musk refused to censor user speech. Kamala Harris says that Musk better behave himself 
or he will, quote, lose his privileges. privileges and it should be taken down. They are directly speaking to millions and millions of people without any level of, of, of oversight or regulation. And that has to stop. She thinks, and the Democratic establishment thinks, that free speech is a privilege. Well, you know and I know that it's a right. And if Kamala Harris is elected, the powers behind her will quash that right. They're already halfway there. It will be too late by 2028. Once we're in the grips of totalitarianism, we're not going to be able to vote our way out of it. This is our last chance to stop them. After long conversations with President Trump and his team and his family, I know that he is fully convinced of this priority. He sees the censorship machine for what it is. Remember, he was kicked off Twitter back in 2021, and he has experienced directly how government agencies are being weaponized to destroy the government's political opponents. He's gonna be relying on me to help clean up that corruption, and that's why I'm relying on my supporters like you to help him return to the White House. As you know, this could be a very close election. A disputed election result would be a disaster for our divided nation. President Trump needs to win in a landslide, both in the Electoral College and in the popular vote. He can't do that unless my supporters join him. So look at the big picture. We have to unify. We have to overthrow the entrenched elites who are now ruining our country. So let's get Donald Trump elected on November 5th so that we can restore our constitution, so that we can revive the middle class, so that we can rescue our democracy and censorship and surveillance, unravel the war machine, protect children's health, and make America healthy again. Make America healthy again, man. I am so happy to see RFK Jr. on the stump for Trump. I, I was hoping that he would be potentially a running mate, but this is just as good. I mean, he's built a coalition that is unstoppable. J.D. Vance, you like my J.D. Vance beard? <laughs> this is my J.D. Vance beard. <laughs> this is in honor of J.D. No, just kidding. My, my family wanted me to grow it back. But we'll call it the J.D. Vance beard for now. <laughs> but Vivek, RFK, Elon Musk, Ron Paul joining the administration, working with Elon Musk to cut the fat. Here's that moment again that uh, Kamala Harris, pure cringe. Get out the vote. Get out the vote. Let's 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 win. <laughs> yeah, she can't even get her, her own supporters to join her in a chant. That's how cringe this is. Here's President Trump talking about what he's going to do. And economic. Under my leadership, we are quickly going to turn this economic nightmare into an economic miracle. We're going to do great things. You are. We're going to make America wealthy again, and we're going to make America affordable again. We have to get the prices down. I told the story this morning. A woman goes up to a counter in a supermarket with three apples. It was reported somewhere, and it's just like, this can't happen in this country. And brings them up, three apples, an elderly woman brings them up to the counter, and she realized that they're too expensive, and they've gone up so much from the last couple of months. And she takes one of the apples back to the refrigeration section and walks back and she buys two apples instead of three. This shouldn't be happening in the United States. I don't know. So we're just one day away from the best jobs and biggest paychecks and the brightest economic future that the world has ever seen. But you might Let's go, baby. I mean, there's so much content from today. I mean, the guy held three rallies. Okay, where's Kamala? Four years of Kamala have delivered nothing but economic hell for American workers. You know that. Her inflation disaster has made life unaffordable and cost families over $30,000 in higher prices. $30,000 in higher prices. Here's Eric Trump in Reading, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Eric Trump. Pennsylvania! 
Well, Donald, Donald Trump, Trump is in the house, so let's make some noise for the greatest president the United States have ever had. Guys, they have done everything, everything to try and take him away from this country. They have tried to do everything to take him away from our family. And tomorrow, we vindicate ourselves, all of us. I have truly never been more proud of an individual in my life. I really mean that sincerely. The guy has more vigor, the guy has more energy, the guy has more backbone than any person I have ever seen before. I mean, the guy just doesn't stop. He doesn't stop. Well, we love you too. We love you too. Thank you, my man. Guys, they tried everything. They tried the Russia hoax. They tried dirty dossiers. They impeached him the first time, they impeached him the second time, they went after his Supreme Court candidates. They tried to take away his First Amendment right, they took him off of Twitter, they took him off of Facebook, they took him off of Instagram. They raided his home, they raided Melania's closet, they raided Barron's room. They subpoenaed me 111 times. When that didn't work, you know what they did? They tried to take him off the ballot in Colorado, then they tried to take him off the ballot in Maine. When that didn't work, they weaponized every single AG and DA around the country to go after him, to criminally prosecute him. And you know what, when that didn't work, some bad man tried to take his life, and the whole time, guys, he had stood up and he said three simple words, fight, fight, fight. You know what, guys, the fight is over. The fight is just beginning. Tomorrow, we take back the United States of America. We restore all the things we love, the greatest economy, the greatest constitution, love of the American flag, love of, of the Second Amendment, love of family, love of God. Guys, we take it all back. You know, Sarah just said it. We win Pennsylvania, we win the entire country. If we win Pennsylvania, we win the United States of America. And so guys, thank you for the greatest 10 years of my life. Thank you for the support of my father. I can't tell you how much it means to him. I can't tell you how much it means to our family. We love you, we love you, we love you. God bless all of you, God bless you. God bless the United States of America. Let's make America great again. Thank you, Pennsylvania. Thank you, guys. Amen. So Trump's message wasn't just about an election, winning it. It's about saving the American dream. Even with Ron Paul's endorsement, with the economic revolution they're planning, with the massive crowds we're seeing, something historic is building. But remember what he said. Donald Trump said, you must vote. The entire future of our republic hangs in the balance. So here's my question to you. What will you tell your children about where you stood in this moment? Share your answer in the comments below.